In chapter four, we're going to be studying the mathematics of finance, and we're going to begin with section 4.1 to where we're learning about compound interest. Now, interest is when you invest money into, say, a savings account at a bank, that bank will give you money for allowing them to keep your money for a predetermined amount of time. That's called interest. The amount of money that the bank gives you is the interest. The amount of money that you invest, that's what's referred to as the principal. And there are two main types of interest. There's simple interest and there's compound interest. Now the title of this section is compound interest, but we're gonna begin with simple interest because that's the foundation of what we need for um, our topic of compound interest today. So simple interest is the interest that's earned only from the original principal. That's the amount that you're investing. Okay, so interest is earned, the bank is paying you money based on how much you have invested of the original investment. And this simple interest can be determined by the formula I equal PRT. I is the interest, how much the bank is giving you. P is the principal, how much money you put into the bank. R is the rate and T is time. Now I do want to note that time is always in terms of years. Okay, so if, if the original problem is given to you in, in months or days, you always have to convert that to years when we're using this formula. Okay, another important formula that we'll see in this section is the accumulated amount for simple interest. Uh, accumulated amount is just simply the principal plus the interest. How much you invest in the savings account plus how much the bank pays you uh, for leaving your money into the savings account. This formula is A equal P times one plus RT. Uh, now this is a, um, a in, this formula is easy to arrive at. It's just not some letters that we're pulling out of out of space here. If we were to consider that the accumulated amount is the principal plus interest, we can then use the formula for the interest to arrive at this formula. All right, so. I equals PRT, so I can replace that I with PRT. And then using a little bit of algebra, we can factor out a P out of both of these terms. We factor out by dividing each term by a P, writing the P on the outside of the parentheses, inside is what's left over after we divide. P divided by P is one, PRT divided by P is RT. We have an RT left over. All right, and that's, and that's where this formula comes from. It's just an adaptation of the interest formula. Okay, and so we'll use both of these formulas in the following examples. All right, here's an example. We want to find the simple interest on a $1,000 investment made for three years at an interest rate of 5% per year. And also, what is the accumulated amount? All right, so, so what are they asking us to find here? They want us to find the simple interest and they want us to find the accumulated amount. All right, so we can find the simple interest using our interest formula, I equals PRT and we're plugging in our numbers. Now make sure that you understand what's given to us. You may want to come over to the side and identify all the variables, right? So the P, that's the principal, that's how much we invested, that's the $1,000. The rate is how much the bank is paying us, the interest rate that the bank is paying us, that's 5% per year. We need to write that rate as a decimal when we're working with this in the formula. And that's 0.05. Uh, to convert a 5% uh, to a decimal, we move the decimal 
to the right two spaces, that gives us a 0 0.05, okay? Um, or you can think of dividing 5% by 100, that'll give you the 0 0.05. And the time in years, that is three years. Once we identify all, our, all of our variables, then it should be a matter of just plugging into that formula. So I is equal to 1,000 times 0 0.05, times three. And as far as um, formulas go, uh, when we're running our calculations, especially in this chapter, I recommend that you have a good calculator that you know how to operate. I would recommend the TI-83, TI-84. That has a lot of nice features uh, that you will find handy in this chapter as well as when we get to the chapter on matrices. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, to, to calculate the interest, showing you how to do this in the TI-83. Right, so we're saying 1,000 times 0 0.05 times 3, right, which is 150. And you don't need uh, the, uh, you know, a graphing calculator for this. Um, but you know, if you were looking to buy a calculator, you know, that this one's definitely a good one or borrow one from a friend. Okay, so that is the amount of interest, right? So if you invest $1,000 into a savings account that earns 5% per year for three years, the bank would give you $150. You would make $150 off of that $1,000 initial investment. Okay, that's a simple interest. Uh, but there's a second question, what is the accumulated amount? The accumulated amount is found using that second formula that we saw. Now, of, of course, you know, once you find the interest, you can simply find the accumulated amount by adding the $1,000 plus the $150, right? So our answer should be $1,150. Uh, I'm gonna work through this using that second formula just so you can see how that works. All right, so using this formula, we've got 1,000 for the principal, 0 0.05 for the R, and three for the time. And over here in the calculator, I'm gonna clear this out, and we can type in 1,000, parentheses one plus, 0 0.05 times three, close parentheses, and that gives that $1,150 that we were expecting to see there. That we would have gotten the same answer if we would have just added 1,000 plus 150. But if the problem were not to have asked you for the simple interest to begin with, that but it only asks you for the cumulative amount, then, then it would be advantageous to use uh, this accumulated amount formula. Okay, let's look at a second example here. Determine the simple interest rate at which $1,200 will grow to $1,250 in eight months. All right, so this one looks a little different, right? Because we're not just being asked to find the interest or the accumulated amount, we're being asked to find the simple interest rate, right? We want to find R. So that means that we have to be given all of the other variables, right? A, P, and T. All right, we can still use our accumulated amount formula. All right, let's, let's determine our variables and then we'll plug in. Okay, so we're trying to determine the simple interest rate at which $1,200 will grow to 1250. So the accumulated amount, that's the 1250, that's how much it grows to. And the principal is how much we started with, that's the 1200. 
and the time is eight months, remember we have to convert that to years. To convert months to years, we're gonna divide by the number of months there are in a year, which is 12. So eight divided by 12. Now here, important to, to make note of, I highly recommend that you leave your, your numbers as fractions when you have fractions. Do not round your numbers until you get to the final answer. Because if you round any intermediate numbers, that's going to cause your final answer to be off, maybe even by a few cents, but that may be enough to where an online homework system such as WebWork will not accept your answer. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this as eight twelfths of a year. Now you could reduce this to, uh, what, take a four out, but you could reduce that to two thirds, right? And the reason I'm saying to leave that as a fraction because two thirds is 0.6666 repeating, right? That's a non-terminating decimal. If you rounded that to 0.67, you're, you're truncating, right? You're gonna get a truncation error in your final answer. So it's better to leave it as a fraction because that's an exact number as opposed to rounding it. All right, so let's see. A is 1250, P is 1200, and T is, I'm gonna write that as two thirds, my simplified answer. And now what am I trying to solve for? I'm trying to solve for this R. So I need to get R by itself. Okay, so let's do that by dividing both sides by 1200. Okay, and again, I'm just gonna leave my fractions as they are. If I tried to, if I tried to write that as a decimal, it may be non-terminating and I'd have to round. So it's better to leave it as a fraction. And if you have that graphing calculator, you can type it all into the same line, um, which makes it much easier to work with. Okay, so now we're still trying to solve for this R you aren't getting that R by itself. So we can subtract one from both sides. Now we've got R times two thirds. And then finally to get R by itself, we can divide by two thirds, which is equivalent to multiplying by three halves, multiplying by its reciprocal. Okay, so in the graphing calculator, we're going to multiply three halves times 1250 divided by 1200 minus one. Okay, let's see what that's going to look like. So three halves times, I'm going to use parentheses, right, exactly the way I see it on the screen, 1250 divided by 1200 minus one, close parentheses, and this gives me an answer of 0 0.0625, and that should be the interest rate. All right, so my interest rate, I get an answer of 0 0.0625, and depending on the directions, they may want you to leave it as a decimal, they may want you to write it as a percent, they should make that clear of how they want you to do that, and if we're Putting that back in terms of a percent, you would multiply by 100 or move your decimal place to the right two spaces. 6.25% is the simple interest rate that you would need for $1,200 to grow to $1,250 in over an eight-month period. 